So, did you ever need to highlight some objects when your mouse gets over it in a good game? Because this is actually pretty easy to set up once you know the trick. Now, of course, if you're working with UI elements, this is really easy, because they have readily available mouse entered and mouse exited signals that you can use to create those hover effects. But what about 2D and 3D nodes? Well, suppose that you have a 3D scene like this one, with a bunch of 3D models, some lights, and a camera. Our goal here will be to catch our mouse movements so that whenever our pointer gets over one of the items in the scene, it gets highlighted by turning white, and then of course when the pointer gets off of it, it resets back to its original colors. The thing is that by default, 3D models can't catch those mouse events. When you import a 3D mesh file, it usually only contains basic 3D nodes or mesh instance nodes. To solve this, what we need to do is add an area 3D node to detect our mouse signals. So typically, we can do the following. First, we'll go to our scene hierarchy and right-click on our model instance to toggle on its Editable Children option. This will allow us to access the exact mesh shape of the model in a few seconds. Second, we'll create a new node as a child of our model instance of area 3D type. You'll notice that Godot shows us a little warning, because as always when creating physics bodies or area triggers in Godot, we need to give this area a physical shape thanks to a collision shape child node. But here, instead of creating it manually, what we'll do is use our item's mesh shape itself. Basically, by selecting the mesh instance node that comes from our imported 3D model, we can go to the top of the viewport and use this little menu to auto-create a collider that matches this shape more precisely than using any primitive box or sphere. You can play around with those options to get a more or less accurate collider shape, though remember that more precise also means more taxing on the computer. In our case, since it's just about detecting the overall zone of the item, we can go for a simplified version. And so here we go, you see that our item now has a collider that roughly matches the shape of the mesh. Finally, we'll drag this auto-generated collision shape 3D node inside our area 3D, and if you select back the area and you go to its signals tab on the right, you'll see that this node type will indeed allow us to catch a mouse entered and mouse exited signals based on this new collider shape. To actually handle those mouse events, let's attach a new script on our object. Note that I'm going to put the script on the root object, not on the area inside, because we'll also need easy access to its mesh, since we'll want to play with the materials on this mesh. Feel free to call the script as you wish, here I'll go for object highlight, and inside we'll put this bit of code. The core idea of this script is that whenever a mouse enters the area 3D node for this object, we swap all the materials on its mesh instance child for a highlight material, and then when the mouse exits, we swap them back to the original materials. To make it adapt to more use cases, what I did here is that I exported the references to the mesh instance node to swap materials on, and to the area 3D node to get mouse signals from, so that they can be assigned in the inspector, if you want, but I also made sure in the ready function that is run when the scene starts, that if they're not yet assigned, the script auto-fetches them from the current child node of this object. Then, using those references, we can start by filling an array to remember what are the normal base materials for this object's mesh, so that we can restore its colors when the mouse exits. And we'll also connect the mouse entered and mouse exited signals of the area 3D node to the function that actually toggles our highlight on and off. By the way, these are materials I've defined in the override slots of the mesh instance using material resource assets from my project like this. So, the highlight in itself consists in replacing all the materials on the mesh instance, either by the highlight material, if we're toggling the object on, or by the default materials we stored in our array if we're toggling it off. And, well, that's it! If we give every highlightable object in our scene the same kind of hierarchy with an area 3D and an auto-generated collider, and then put the same script on them, then if we run the demo, you see that we can move our mouse across the screen, and it properly highlights the item currently being hoovered 
by turning it white. Now, in the case of 2D nodes, for example, sprites 2Ds, we need to do sort of the same thing. Because, again, those sprites can't handle mouse events on their own, we need to give each object its own area 2D node and a collision shape 2D node inside. And although we could actually select our sprite and use a tool to auto-generate a collision polygon, just like we did before for our 3D meshes, here it's a bit of an overkill. Indeed, since our sprites don't overlap, and we don't care so much about the exact shape of the image on them, we can just create our collision shape 2D node manually and give it a rectangular shape that matches the size of 128 by 128 pixels of our image. And the cool thing is that because all of our sprites have the same size, we can even copy-paste this sub-hierarchy directly, and they'll all share the same rectangular shape, which reduces the amount of resources needed in the project. The logic will once again be handled by a script on each of our sprites to denote, and it's even shorter than the one for 3D. In the case of 2D, the easiest solution is just to change the modulate property of a sprite between a highlighted and a normal color, as you can see. But in any case, there you go. We've now got a working, albeit basic, highlight system for both our 2D scenes, based on sprite 2D nodes, and our 3D scenes, made of imported 3D objects. As usual, I really hope you liked this quick tip. Don't hesitate to react in the comments and to subscribe to the channel to get more videos, and of course, a huge thanks to my Patreon members for the support, and to you for watching. And as always, Take care.